thanks Gather in welcome, family and friends Gather in hope, compassion and strength Gather to celebrate once again Gather in peace, gather in thanks, gather to welcome family and friends, gather in hope, compassion and strength, gather to celebrate once again. Gather to celebrate once again. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Pat, Patty, Elizabeth, Christine, Dawn, Dana. Welcome, everyone. Oh, my wordy. It is um, a little bit strange uh, being back in this arena. Uh, and it hasn't, uh, I, I will say, we need a lot. We needed a lot of prayer right in the very beginning, but we got it all straightened around. <laughs> and so here we are. And for all of you that are here in our area, I'm so glad that you're home and safe and warm. And um, just know that um, whatever happens this morning is all in divine <laughs> timing and in, in the in the way that it is supposed to. So um, we are thrilled that you're with us this morning. And I'm going to ask, uh, oh, and Scott's here. Scott's here running the um, PowerPoint. So uh we're going to begin, as we always do, with our opening song. Good morning, all, and there's our lyrics. Yay! Come, let us gather together. This is a place. Of love, we come together as people of prayer. This is a house built on love. Come, let us gather in peace. This is a sacred space. We join our hearts here in one loving family. This is a house built on love. We come together as people of prayer. This is a house built on love. Well, there. Scott, it ran on its own. How great is that? <laughs> Whoops, I'm getting a... Oh, you know what that was? That was my coffee pot going off. I was hearing this buzzing. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I'm going to invite you to join me in prayer. Whew, yeah. Here we are, God. Open and receptive to the living spirit of truth. Life continues to be very interesting. As we move into 2024, we move in with the understanding and the knowing that love is all that is needed. Whatever is showing up in your life today, just pour on the love, for love is the healing bomb. And wherever there is need, love is there. Because we are love and we are sending it. So let yourself be the love. 
be the love bomb, just sending out all this love into the world. And for that and so much more, we say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And so it is, and we let it be. Amen. Amen. And I want to just share with you um, that um, it's been a quiet week for me, and I hope it has been for you as well. Um, because of this little um, uh, distraction of having to do this online today, we will do our regular service next Sunday with finishing up the, the uh, burning bowl and uh, with our white stone. So join us next Sunday for that. And um, other than that, I think um, we're good. We're ready to rock and roll this morning. So we're going to now do our... But the good omnipotent. And our mission is, our vision is centered in divine love. We celebrate a spiritually transformed world. We celebrate a world where everybody knows that love is the answer, that they just pour out the love in whatever situation is showing up in their life. And our mission statement is Unity Center for Spiritual Growth reaches in to reach out through education, service, and creation to community and off community. And that's what we are doing right here, right now. Education, service, and creation of community. And community happens wherever two or more are gathered. And our core values are we are loving, we are accepting, we are authentic, we are transformative, we are soul-centric, we are compassionate, and we are welcoming. And that is the truth about us. And now I'm going to turn it back to Dina, and we'll do our opening song. Okay, um, I think I am here, so let's go to the next slide. Nope, nope, nope. That must have been the song she was going to do. Oh, Dina. Okay, let's keep, uh, there we are, let's go to Namaste. So, um, and hopefully in the middle of Namaste, Dina will return. So let us say together, Namaste, Namaste, my heart sings, Namaste, 
The Christ in me beholds the Christ in you. Namaste. 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 And so good morning to everybody. And I see so many of you now are posting on the chat. And I'm grateful for that. So you're greeting one another in whatever way that you need to. And um, Christine, did, are you hearing from Dina? Where Where is, I can't see Dina. Wait a minute. Somebody's telling me something. You have to add Dina and can't do it on her end. And I'm not seeing her come in. Um, isn't that interesting? Huh. Um, let me send her another invite. Let me send her. She's backstage, but I don't see. Oh, I know where she is. She's down lower. Is that her down there? I don't know. Dina. Hold on. There you are. There you are. Hi. What the here heck? I am. What the heck? I'm, so <laughs> I, never, I never left. What happened to you when we were back? When both of us were live before you started in with the vision and mission, I took myself backstage. And then I guess I disappeared to you. You did. And, so, you and did. I can't, I can take myself backstage, but I can't put myself back on. Well, we're going to go back to your song. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now that you, now that you can see where I am when I'm backstage. I can see you now. Yes. Okay. I'm going off and I'm going to let you stay on. <laughs> awesome. All right. Here we are in the heart of the winter. This is the congregational song. Deep, deep into the heart of the winter. Deep, deep, deep into the womb of the mother. Deep, deep, deep where there is no other song but the song of my soul. Deep, deep, deep into the heart of the winter. Deep, deep, deep into the womb of the mother. Deep, deep, deep where there is no other song but the song of my soul. Deep, deep, deep into the heart of the winter. Deep, deep, deep into the womb of the mother. Deep, deep, deep where there is no other song but the song of my soul. The song of my soul. Oh, that was so worth waiting for. <laughs> I'll let you take me off and on. All right. Well, you know what happened is you went down below my my tabs at the bottom so I never saw you you weren't across this way I don't know how that happened but I'll I'll, I'll know where to find you now <laughs> so I'm going to take you off and we're going to go to our five basic principles and we'll see where those might be right there and I you know 
as I say every week, and, and most all of you that are here with us this morning are probably people that join me every week, but I tell you these because they are so darn important. God is good in everywhere present. Even in the mix-ups we're having this morning, God is right there with us. The Spirit of God lives within each person. Therefore, all people are inherently good. And the reason that God is everywhere present is because there isn't a God outside of us. It is a God that is within us. We create our life experiences through our way of thinking. Our thoughts are creative. I tell you often, stand guard at the portal of your mind, letting in only the thoughts that you want to have not the thoughts that you don't want to have. There is power in affirmative prayer, which we believe increases our connection with God. Prayer and meditation is the keystone. Prayer and meditation is the cornerstone, keystone, whatever you want to call it, to these other three. And then the last one is knowing these is not enough. We must put them into action. We must use them. And I know that they have been my lifeline for a very long time. And I hope that you use them as well as I do. And sometimes, and I've told you this before and I'll tell you again, sometimes I forget until I'm way down the rabbit hole. And then I have to remember, oops, what do I need to do right now? Have I prayed? Have I asked for clarity? What is my thinking? Am I remembering that people are inherently good, even when they're cutting me off? Or sometimes when I'm cutting them off, do they remember that about me? Um, <laughs> so these are very, very important principles, and they are the foundation of our teachings. And so... I'm going to be the one sharing the daily word with you this morning as well. Um, so let me find it on my phone because it's a great one this morning. Um, let me see here. Here it is. The daily word for today, we can take down the slide, Scott, or I can remove it. I do have that capability. You know, I have all power right now. All power in all these buttons. <laughs> I just have to remember which ones to use. So the daily word today is wholeness. Wholeness is my nature and the truth of my life. Today is Sunday, January 7th, 2024. I see myself whole, complete. And as a living expression of God, my thoughts fill my consciousness with a divine idea of wholeness. My words affirm this wholeness. Through my actions, I bless the life energy in my body with the right balance of exercise, rest, and nutrition. I live from my wholeness. Even if I experience illness, I may receive treatment, but I do not consider myself weak or diseased. I move through every health challenge with faith and grace, trusting the experience has come to pass. I remember wherever I am, whatever may be ha happening, divine life is always seeking to express through me. To restore my awareness of wholeness, which is and will always be my true spiritual state of being. Scripture comes from Luke 1134. Your eye is the lamp of your body. If your eye is healthy, your whole body is full of light. But if it is not healthy, your body is full of darkness. So the word for today is wholeness. Wholeness is my nature and the truth of my life. And so now let us prepare for my message. And I'm going to bring Dina back on for that. <laughs> 
I found her. I know where she is. <laughs> Thank you, Pat. <laughs> to open up Pat's talk this morning, this is a song by Brett Hesla, based on uh, a traditional Norwegian American folk tune. This is Slowly, Slowly, The Evening Falls. Oh, Dina, that was absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much. And I noticed that Ruth said I didn't do a weather report. Well, isn't that the best? I'm just making a big assumption here. I'm making an assumption that everybody knows that it is snowing here. And we're really having our first snowstorm of the, of the winter. And it's kind of exciting to know that we're going to be actually having some snow for a few days and then it's going to turn to rain. Oh, and something else I forgot to tell you. And that is that our solar is on our roof. Uh, they will be coming this week to actually do the hookup so that we start generating. Um, but I am so excited. That is so, so, so cool. And um, this week, our uh, overhang will be installed. It's all put together, and it's going to be put up um, this week as well. So those two big projects will be out of the way, and we will be on to new things. So I'm really excited about that. So yes, yay for solar, Michael. Absolutely. So let us now turn to the gifts of winter. 
Winter has a gift to give. It comes when the sky is clear, the sun is brilliant, the trees are bare, and first snow is yet to come. It is a gift of utter clarity. In winter, one can walk into the woods that had been opaque with summer growth only a few months earlier and see the trees clearly, singly and together, and see the ground they are rooted in. Winter clears the landscape, however brutally, giving us a chance to see ourselves and each other more clearly, to see the very ground of our being. And that is a quote from Parker Palmer. I love Parker Palmer. And before we went on, I got a text from um, uh, Dr. Jason, and he is out snowshoeing this morning listening to us. So we are really excited. We, You know, you never know how people are going to, uh, where they're going to be when they tune in. And some may be tuning in later. So if you're tuning in later, we want to welcome you as well. So today we're going to recognize and celebrate the gifts of this season and the season of winter. You know, winter has historically gotten a bad rap. You hear sayings such as the bleak midwinter. Now is the winter of our discontent. Death comes in the winter of our lives. As we are noticing climate change, some of these old sayings may not be as relevant as they used to be. I used to think that main winters were gray and cold, and that would be my And when we were living in Virginia Beach, I would always complain about the main winters until I came back home. And when I came back home, I got to see we have lots of sunshine in the winter. Yesterday was a beautiful sunny day for most of it. It really gave me a chance to look at how many years I've lived with an erroneous belief system. I've lived with an assumption that really isn't true. You know, I don't mind the cold, but I do mind the days getting dark so early. And I am so grateful that we are now in the time when the days are getting longer. I read a post the other day that said, by the end of January, we'll have one more hour of light. Isn't that the best? So I'm going to open with a story about Chinese medicine that I learned from my friend Stephanie. And his, her story might be helpful to you this morning. Stephanie didn't like winter, very much like me. And she would become quite depressed. And I know that there are a lot of people that have seasonal depression. And then she had a friend who practiced Chinese medicine. And she asked if she would be willing to see winter in a different way. She explained to Stephanie that in the Chinese culture... Winter is respected as a time of rest and introspection. What a concept. That it is a time to be respected and not dreaded. The Chinese are particularly gifted at learning from nature. And according to the Nai Ching, a book of Chinese medicine, it says, in winter... People sleep early and do not rise until the day breaks. So what they're saying is retire early at night and do not get up until you see the rising of the sun. During winter, nature is in her resting season, quiet, withdrawn, deep in the earth and the roots preparing for spring. Have you ever thought about what it's what's going on at the next layer down under the ground? I see I I think about that a lot. And not a lot, but sometimes. And I think of you know there must be super highways going on down there and all kinds of of bugs and animals and stuff running around and then there is those that are just going in to sleep. So during winter, nature is in her resting season. And like nature, 
This is relax and sleep deeply. I was talking to her, texting with a friend yesterday, and it was late afternoon, and she said, I think I'm going to get into bed for a while. Now that's what winter is all about. Having viewed winter in this way, winter becomes much more appealing. And so thanks to her friend, Stephanie came to appreciate, and yes, even look forward to winter. Winter has become an opportunity to slow down and to go within and to rest. And I hope that you're taking the opportunity to do that. Today's going to be one of those wonderful days. Stay in your jammies, get a good book, and crawl back into bed after I'm done talking with you. So let's look at some of the gifts of this season. And this comes from A Celebration of Winter Solstice in the Cycle of Life by Joyce Rupp and Macrina Whitaker. There is a tendency to want to hurry from autumn to spring, to avoid the long dark days that winter brings. Many people do not like constant days bereft of light and months filled with colder temperatures. They struggle with the bleakness of land and the emptiness of trees. Their eyes and hearts seek color. Their spirits tire of tasting the endless gray skies. There is great rejoicing in the thought that light and warmth will soon be filling more and more of each day. But winter darkness has a positive side to it. As we gather to celebrate the first turn from winter to spring, we're invited to recognize and honor the beauty in the often unwanted season of winter. Let us invite our hearts to be glad for the courage winter proclaims. Let us be grateful for the wisdom winter brings in teaching us about the need for withdrawal as an essential part of renewal. Let us encourage our spirits as earth prepares to come forth from this time of withdrawal into a season filled with light. Soon we will welcome the return of the sun and the coming of springtime. And we do so, as we do so, let us remember and embrace the positive enriching aspects of winter's darkness. And that is the end of that quote. And so this is really a fertile time. This is a time for introspection. This is a time for going within and spending time in that quiet space within. Isn't that a beautiful... I just did something that I wasn't supposed to do. (laughs) Isn't that a beautiful quote, though, to think about winter in that way? So we learn from this teaching that one of the gifts of winter is rest. I found this great meme. Nothing in nature blooms all year. Be patient with yourself. Oh my gosh, how appropriate is that? Nothing in nature blooms all year. Be patient with yourself. How often do we fight our need to rest? In our culture of just do it, in our focus on achievement at all costs, we forget that we have a very real physiological and psychological need for rest. Our bodies, minds, and spirit need time off. There's another lesson we learn from this season, it is, and it is the importance of letting go. We did that last week in our service when you wrote down the things that you were no longer willing to take into 2024. Rumi said, be like a tree and let the dead leaves drop. Be like a tree and let the dead leaves drop. And you know, if things came up after you did that ritual the other uh, last Sunday, 
and you want to add more of the things that you want to let go, just get yourself a piece of toilet paper or a uh, Kleenex and write those out. You can do it right from your home and flush it down the toilet. That doesn't have to be a one-time thing. Winter encourages us through our observation of nature to let go, take some time apart, and allow yourself to drop some leaves. So what beliefs or stuff are you ready to let go of? And as, as I mentioned, you let go of a lot, a lot last week. But other th things, have you noticed where you're still holding on? Is it preventing you from showing up in your fullness? Where are you still holding on to stuff? that is keeping you stuck or blocked. Let it go. Don't take it any further. There's an old saying, you can't cross the ocean to new shores if you're afraid to leave the port. So just for a moment, using your power of imagination, what would happen if the trees were afraid to drop their leaves? If the animals were afraid to hibernate, nature recognizes that with each season, there is a letting go. This scripture from Ecclesiastes understood the importance of surrendering to the seasons. For everything, there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. That comes out of Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8. I think if it were written today, it may have some different wording in there. Um, and you probably heard the same words that I did that went, ooh, it prickled. We can fight the seasons, resist the changing weather and landscapes and the changes inherent in the season of our own lives or we can flow gracefully with those changes as nature does some of you know that i'm interested in astrology and i was listening last night to a couple of uh folks discussing what's coming for the new year and um 2024 it's going to be a little bit bumpy however we can be prepared for that. We can roll with it. We can be part of the flow and not part of trying to stop it from happening. Because we know this. Any of us that are on this call have lived long enough to know that change is always happening. Just as change happens in nature, change happens in our own lives as well. Interestingly, the Chinese associate each season with an element, and winters is water. Water is both adaptable and flexible. Interesting that we used water last week for our letting go process. Water can conform to any shape and let erode the largest, and yet erode the water is powerful in its subtlety as is the season of winter. We also learn from this tradition that each of the five elements manifest within our physical bodies, wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. Qualities of compassion, understanding, and responsiveness to the needs and feelings of others are characteristics of the water element. I'm going to say that again. Qualities of compassion, 
understanding and responsiveness to the needs and feelings of others are all characteristics of the water element. We can see from this description how important winter is to take time to rest and reflect, to nurture ourselves so we can emerge in the spring refreshed and renewed. You know, I don't know about you, but when I get tired, when I don't take time to rest and recharge, I can become very cranky. I can also become rigid. That is when I am not going with the flow. When that happens, my water element is out of balance. And I have a really hard time going with the flow. So rest is so important to our ability to be flexible, to be open, to be loving, and to be compassionate. We can learn so much from nature about the natural order of things and the importance of accepting that order. Winter is a time of rest, a time to let the sap run back down in our roots, to be quiet. And that's what's happening right now. And what's going to happen in around March? Those roots are going to get tapped. And that's when the sap will be running for making maple syrup. It's also a time of preparation for the bursting forth that is spring. Spring leads to the incredible growth energy of summer and finally to autumn's harvest. And then we rest and begin again. So just as there are cycles in nature, there are cycles to our lives. The Hindu tradition teaches that there are four stages to our lives. The first is that of student, which traditionally lasts about 12 years. Our primary responsibility during this time is to learn to be as receptive as possible to what our teachers have to offer us. But we don't acquire knowledge for knowledge's sake. According to Houston Smith, who wrote the book, The World's Religions, habits were to be cultivated, character acquired. The liberally educated student was to emerge to turn out a good and effective life. So the second stage is that of householder, beginning with marriage. Here, our considerable energies turn toward in pursuit of the first three human wants. Pleasure, primarily through our relationships. Success, through our work or our vocation. And duty, through community activity. And then we move into the third stage, that of retirement. Traditionally starting any time after the birth of the first grandchild, this stage encourages withdrawal from the rat race of life. Smith explains the time has come to begin one's true adult education, to discover who one is and what life is about. It is a time for working out a philosophy and then working that philosophy into a way of life, a time for transcending the senses to find and dwell with the reality that underlies this natural world. Another word that I like in place of retirement is refirement. It was interesting, many of you know Gloria, and I was having a, a phone conversation with her yesterday, and we were talking about aging, and with aging comes the wisdom. And that's the stage three. This is a stage where we begin to really see what's important in our lives. So most of you probably here on this call are in either stage two or stage three. And this is a time where we observe anything about our own life and how it shows up in one of these stages. And, you know, quite honestly, some of these stages are not relevant today. Our life is changing so much that retirement doesn't necessarily come at 65 or 70 when most people 
in past years have thought, this is the time that I retire. Because what we realize is that we have more to do. We have more to give. We have more to want to, to express. So what I appreciate about this teaching and and where I am in my own life cycle is that to acknowledge and appreciate the different seasons of our lives. I think, you know, people say to me, well, when are you going to retire? And I think it's not even on my horizon. So I think that we lose sight of this in our Western culture. We lose sight of the fact that we have so much to give. And it doesn't require us to be a certain age in order to do that. When we start to understand that every season has its gifts and that every season is inevitable, we can relax into the flow of those seasons and the flow of our lives. Winter is also the season of hope. We hope the bulbs we planted in the fall will bloom in the spring. We hope the snow will turn into rain and eventually ripe fields. And we hope the sun will return to its fullness and warm us once again. We hope. So during this winter season of winter, I invite you to spend more time resting, relaxing, and in the quiet. Follow the examples of Mother Nature and let your sap flow into your roots, respecting the cycles of the season. Center yourself in the hope and knowledge that spring will return, just as the ancients did when they celebrated the hope of light's return during the solstice. Honor this season and the season of your life. And don't think the garden loses its ecstasy in winter. It's quiet, but the roots are down there, riotous. And that comes again from Rumi. So I'm going to bring Dina back on as we prepare for meditation. So as you become quiet now, allow yourself to get in a rhythm of breathing that is comfortable for you. And in the hushed stillness of winter, nature bestows upon us its silent gifts, weaving a tapestry of tranquility that blankets the world in serene splendor. As the earth slumbers beneath a quilt of snow, winter unfolds its treasures, inviting us to delve into a contemplative meditation on the profound offerings of this season.
The crisp, cold air carries with it a sense of clarity, a refreshing tonic for the mind and spirit. As we breathe in deeply, the frosty, frosty tendrils of winter's breath awaken our senses, grounding us in the present moment, in the quiet landscapes adorned with delicate frost crystals. We find a canvas upon which the artistry of simplicity is painted, teaching us the beauty of paring down letting go, and embracing the purity of each fleeting instant. Beneath the pristine layer of snow lies a tapestry of resilience. Dormant life lies in anticipation, a promise of rebirth and renewal. Winter whispers to us the wisdom of patience, reminding us that growth, transformation, and regeneration often unfold in the quiet cocoon of stillness. Just as the seeds lie dormant in the frozen ground, patiently waiting for the warmth of spring, so too can we find solace in the dormant moments of our lives, knowing that within them lies the potential for vibrant new beginnings. The bare branches of trees etched against the winter sky stand as sentinels of strength and endurance. Stripped of their leaves, they showcase a stocky beauty, a stock beauty, a reminder that vulnerability can coexist with resilience. Winter encourages us to shed the unnecessary layers to embrace our authenticity, and to stand tall in the face of life's storms. The gentle fall of snowflakes is a dance of intricate individuality within the collective harmony of winter. Each delicate snowflake is a reminder that uniqueness is woven into the very fabric of creation. In this season of unity and interconnectedness, we are encouraged to appreciate the diversity of our own being and of those around us, recognizing the value of every individual every individual snowflake and the grand symphony of existence. As daylight wanes and the world is cloaked in darkness, winter invites us to explore the depths of our inner selves. In the quiet solitude, we can discover the luminescence within, illuminating the path to self-awareness and introspection. So now let's take that, these words and thoughts into the silence.
Embracing these gifts, we can find solace, wisdom, and a quiet serenity that transcends the chill of the season and warms the depths of our souls. And so it is, and we let it be. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm, I'm loving the messages in the chat. Thank you, everyone, for your comments. They're always so welcomed. And uh, I just want to uh, remind you again that we will uh, pick up where we left off last week, this coming Sunday, with the White Stone and the finishing up of the uh, Burning Bowl. And also this coming week is the Women's um Group, the Unity Women Adventure Group will be online from 4 to 5.30 on Thursday. Come join me. I have some um, interesting and exciting um, stuff I want to share with you. Our registration is required for that. Also, um, on Sunday, Christine will be doing the Vision Board Workshop. That will be from 12, uh, 11.45 to 1.15. To and she will be supplying you with all the materials. But if you do have books um, and magazines and stuff that you want or that you've cut out pictures and, and words, bring them as well. And um, you do have to register for that online also. Um, uh, let me think what else is coming right along. There's, oh, on the 19th, on the 19th, which is a Friday night from 6.30 to 8, uh, Vanessa uh, Gates Elston will be doing a wonderful um, three, she's going to be doing it in three consecutive months of uh, Luminous, and I don't have the description in front of me, but you can get it um, by going online. Um, many of you experienced her with the Winter Solstice and with the Women's Group. And um, she is just an amazing, amazing individual and a wonderful teacher. Um, so again, that requires you to register. I, I'm going to be really quite, I'm, I'm really going to say that most everything that we're going to be doing going forward is going to require a registration um, because it is one of the ways that we get to make sure that um, we capture who you are and that there is interest in what it is that we're doing. Um, and I think that's it for now. Please, please always check heart thoughts and our website for anything because you know we're adding stuff all the time 
And so with that being said, um, don't forget, uh, also during the week, Barbara does uh, an early morning faith lift at 8 o'clock, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And Dina does her Friday evening 10 songs at 7 o'clock. And those are all both on um, Facebook. So, and Christine has put the um, link for our donate button in the the um, chat. So let us say together our um, statement. I'm going to add to the, okay. Uh, do we have the next slide, Scott? With our offering statement, there it is. Divine love flowing from me blesses you. Divine love flowing from me blesses you. And now I'll put Dina back as we, as she sings our offering song. Let me get her. She slid back down again. Here she is. All right. And we'll take the slides down. Remove that. All right. And I'm going to get off here, too. Thank you, Pat. This is a song by Charlie Murphy. Light is returning. Light is returning, even though this is the darkest hour, no one can hold back the dawn. Let's keep it let us keep the light of hope alive, make safe our journey through the storm. Our planet's turning, circling in her path around the sun, Earth Mother's calling her children. Light is returning, even though this is the darkest hour, no one can hold back the dawn. Let's keep it burning, let us keep the light of hope alive, make safe our journey through the storm. Our planet's turning, circling in our path around the sun. Earth Mother's calling her children home. Earth Mother's calling her children home. Earth Mother's calling her children home. Thank you, Dina. And um, I'm going to ask you to just stay right there because uh, we'll bless these tithes and offerings knowing that they go forth to do the will and the work of Unity Center for Spiritual Growth. And now we will close with our peace song. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. that was meant to be with God as the one source united all are we let us walk with each other in perfect harmony let peace begin with me let this 
be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my joyous vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace. Thank you, Dana. Beautiful. And I saw um, somebody asking if there was going to be the um, healing service online. No, that will not be happening this uh, online. So join us next month when that comes up. And uh, Lynn Marie from Minnesota. Welcome. So glad that you're with us this morning. And if you're if you're willing to put some information in the chat so that we can connect with you. And so now I think we will end with our prayer for protection. Whoopsie daisy. There it is. Thank you, Scott. I take Dina off and let us say together, the light of God surrounds us. We are the light. The love of God enfolds us. We are the love. The power of God protects us. We are the power. And the presence of God watches over us. We are the presence. Wherever we are, God is. And all is well. Thank you, everybody, for being here this morning. And especially thanks to Dina and Scott. You guys have been amazing this morning. And I so, so appreciate you. So stay safe, friends. Be well. And we'll see you soon. Blessings.